I am Sacco, a shoemaker born in Italy who immigrated to the United States at the age of 17. Let me tell you a little story of my life. I was raised into a large family in the poorest region of Italy. <clears throat> like many kids my age, I wasn't fond of school. Therefore, I was working instead of being in the classroom. Four years later, in 1909, my brother wanted to immigrate to the United States. Looking for a little adventure, I tagged along. I am Vanzetti, a fishmonger born in Italy. I migrated to the United States of America at the age of 20. We both came to the United States in 1909. I did not meet my boy Vanzetti until the 1917 strike. We are the followers of Luigi Galliani. He was an Italian anarchist who advocated revolutionary violence. Due to the recession, many robberies and crimes were committed at the Slater Morrill Shoe Company factory on the afternoon of April 15, 1920. Robbers had approached two men as they were transporting the company's payroll into two large steel boxes to the main factory. A security guard was shot as he reached for his hip holster and uh, an unarmed paymaster was shot twice, once in the chest and once in the back. As he attempted to flee, the robbers seized the payroll and escaped into the waiting getaway car. trial focused on material evidence, notably bullets, guns, and a cap. Prosecution witnesses testified that bullet 3, the .32 caliber bullet that had fatally wounded Bird Deli, was from a discontinued Winchester .32 auto cartridge loading so absolute that the only bullet similar to it that anyone could locate to make comparisons were those found in the cartridges in Sacco's pockets. Prosecutor Frederick Katzman decided to participate in a forensic bullet examination using bullets test fired from Sokos .32 Colt Automatic after the defense arranged for such tests. Sokos, saying that he had nothing to hide, had allowed his gun to be test fired. With experts for both sides pre present during the trial's second week. All right, so Judge Thayer. These two Italians were accused of murder and robbery at a shoe factory in South Braintree, Massachusetts. This man, Benzetti, although he may not have actually committed the crime attributed to him, is nevertheless culpable because he is an enemy of our existing institution. Because of the society's nativism and conservative views, the demands of innocence of Sacco and Vanzetti were ignored. Therefore, they were convicted guilty on July 14, 1921. But what good is the evidence, and what good is the argument? They are determined to kill us regardless of the evidence of law, of decency, of everything. If they give us delay tonight, it will only meant that they will kill us next week. Let us finish tonight. I'm waiting seven years to die. When they know all the time, they intend to kill us. Wait, what? 
<laughs> what just <laughs> Some of the consequences of the Sacco and Vizzini trial was that it caused a first worldwide protest. Many protesters practiced the idea of modernism, breaking away from the traditional views of immigrants. It showed, uh, the trial showed corruption in American society and the court systems. After the trial, people feared communism because of racism and prejudice. The Sequa and Benzetti trial reminded people of the oppression against the working class who had self-determination during the depression. Even though Sequa and Benzetti were interdependent, there was speculation that Benzetti could have been spared if he blamed Sacco for the brain trees.